In October 2003, the world witnessed an unprecedented fashion show in the world center of fashion, Paris. That was the first ever of its kind in history. The clothes are neither new releases of world-renowned fashion designers, nor trendy stuff from New York or London. They are over 300 sets of ethnic minority group costumes from China. In a world full of tops, jeans and miniskirts, these clothes are transferring the unique aesthetic sense of Chinese ethnic minority groups. China has 56 ethnic minority groups. Taking the north latitude 40 degrees as the boundary, the 55 minority groups besides Han nationality are separated respectively in the north and south of China. In the south, it's warm, plenty of rainfall, highlands and hills. The minority groups live here on farming. Their main materials for clothes are homespun flax and fabrics. Their clothing is usually short, light and thin. In the north, it's cold, windy and plenty of snowfall. There's forests and grasslands. There are more than 20 ethnic minority groups living here on livestock husbandry and hunting. Their clothing is mainly made of hide and fur and there's leather robes as the major styles. The ethnic minority group with the longest history, Orichin group, has lived in the Daxing Anling, Greater Qing'an Mountain, and Shaoxing Anling, Lesser Qing'an Mountain. These mountain ranges along the Heilongjiang River have been there for generations. There are high mountains, snow-covered plains, and flourishing forests. To resist the coldness, Origin people use the fur of roe deer to make clothes. Both men and women wear fur robes, fur-lined jackets, fur trousers, fur boots, fur stockings, fur gloves, roe fur hats, etc. The clothes made of roe deer fur are wear-resistant and cold-resistant. It's also light and it makes it convenient for hunting. The leather robe of Origin people usually reaches the calves and has a wide belt around the waist. The leather trousers usually reach the knees only and the lower part of the leg is covered with fur leggings. The fur leggings are in the shape of horse hoofs, fastened on the belt with a leather rope. The boots are made of roe deer fur on the leg and neck. They won't make any noise when stepping on the snow. The most unique feature of their clothing is roe deer fur hat. The hat is usually made of a complete skin of the roe deer's head, with two ears cut and replaced with two fake ears. If they don't use the fake ears, hunters from far away might mistake them by real roe deer and hurt them. When you walk southward from Daxing Anling mountain range, the vast Inner Mongolia grassland will come into your sight. A minority group that lives in yurts and drinks milk wine is inhabited there. Mongolian people. To suit their life on horseback, they create the Mongolian robe that is easy for riding. sheepskin covered with silk or cotton. The robe is thick and loose with long and narrow sleeves. Wrapped around the waist is a waistband made of silk. 
The loose robe can protect the knees and resist coldness when they're riding or doing livestock farming. At night, they can be used as a quilt. The long and narrow sleeves keep them warm in winter and protect them from mosquitoes in summer. The waistband is to tighten the robe and make sure that when riding, the waist and ribs can remain stable on the horseback. Mongolians like bright colors, such as red, blue and white. They think that red symbolizes fire and sun and brings them warmth, brightness and happiness. Blue symbolizes eternity, faith and loyalty, which well represent the characters of Mongolians. And the milky white is considered to be the sacred color. Hence, Mongolians only wear white robes during ceremonies when wearing the waistband, men usually lift up the robe, making it short on top. Thus, it's convenient for riding. They also look smart and charming in this way. Women wear the waistband in the opposite way. They pull down the robe a little, so it's smooth and neat. This could shape their curves better. In 13 AD, Mongolians were fighting southward and established an empire that crossed Europe and Asia, Yuan Dynasty. The Mongolian robe becomes the noblest clothes in the Yuan Empire. But with the collapse of the governing body, the Mongolian robe didn't leave much trace in the Chinese dressing culture. On the opposite, another minority group that conquered the mainland after 300 years, Manchu minority group, its Chongsan becomes the symbol of Chinese ladies dressing fashion nowadays. Chongsan, Qi Pao, is the traditional costume of Manchus, both men and women. Men's Chongsan have sleeves in the shape of horse hoofs and very narrow sleeves at that. With the changing of times, Especially after the Qing dynasties, the style of Chongsan has changed a lot. It now shows the feminine figure and curves better. Nowadays, Chongsan is considered the representative of Chinese ethnic dressing culture. In the Arba Autonomous Prefecture in Sichuan Province in southwest China, there lives an ethnic minority group. Chang nationality that mingles with the Tibetan people. Chang people's dressing is very simple. Both men and women wear gowns made of native cloth with a long waistcoat made of sheepskin or cotton cloth. It can keep people warm in coldness, protect them from the rain and sometimes functions as a good cushion for sitting. Men like to wear a xian or white kerchief on the head. Wrapped around their calves is felt made of wool or ox's hair. The leggings can keep them warm and protect the calves. Chang women also like to wear kerchief on the head. The kerchief has many beautiful patterns on it. There are also silver ornaments in the shape of plum blossoms inlaid in the collars and the cuffs. It's to wish for good luck, safety, fortune and a long life. Xinjiang area is one of the places that have the highest density of ethnic minority groups. The latitude is low with a mild climate. The Uyghur, Kazakh and Uzbek living in Xinjiang 
wear bright and colourful costumes with unique styles. Popular with women is the colourful dress with a waistcoat over it. The dress of Uyghur and Uzbek is loose with pleats out the chest. The dress of Kazakh and Kyrgyz has lots of pleats at the bottom of the dress. Tajik women also love to have an apron outside the dress. All the women of the ethnic minority groups in Xinjiang love to wear long hair. They make dozens of long plaits and also wear ornaments such as earrings, bracelets and necklaces. Going southward from Xinjiang, you will see a high mountain that sticks into the sky, the Qingzhang Plateau. The Tibetan people living here all wear long gowns and waistbands. The material of Tibetan gown is usually thick slubbed wool called pulu or silk or sheepskin. Tibetan people like black and dark blue. Men's gowns have very wide collars, long sleeves and a loose waist. They usually have a button under the right armpit or two strips in red, blue, green or cyan cloth and they tie a knot when wearing it. There are two types of gowns for women, with sleeves or without. Inside, they wear very bright coloured shirts, such as red and green. The sleeves of the shirt are very long, sometimes two or three times the length of the arms. In normal times, they fold the sleeves, but they wear the sleeves in full length when dancing. The long sleeves seem to be dancing with the body. The main part of the Tibetan gown is very long. The sleeves can be three or four inches longer than the arms. The bottom of the robe is two or three inches over the feet. When wearing it, they pull up the robe to the calves and tighten the waist with a long strip. Under the chest, the gown heaves and forms a bag which can hold some daily commodities. The second feature is that Tibetan people like to have their right arm uncovered by the gown. The right sleeve is dragged from behind and crosses the left shoulder to the chest. Sometimes they let both arms bare and tie the two sleeves around the waist. It's easier for work and makes them look agile and brave. Nowadays, no matter whether you're in the booming New York, in fashionable Paris, or in ancient Xi'an, when somebody wears the Tibetan gown, you could tell at a glance.
If the clothes of the ethnic minority groups in North China are described as wide and loose, the clothes of the southern minority groups can only be described as odd and strange. In the south, especially areas like Yunnan and Guizhou, there lives over 30 minority groups, such as Yi, Dai, Bai, Buyi, Miao, and Gaoshan. There's a big diversity of landforms there, hence the clothes of different ethnic groups are of various styles. The Yi people cover the largest area in South China. Yi men wear unlined jackets in all seasons. The jacket is sleeveless with round collar and buttoned down the front. Usually it's made of cotton cloth or flax. Sometimes it's made of sheepskin. The sheepskin jacket is usually made of a complete sheepskin. It keeps the outline of a sheep and has no collar or sleeve. Nearly all Yi women are experts in needlework and embroidery. The expertise in embroidery is a standard by which the Yi elders and young men judge the girl. If a Yi girl is not good at this, she can't find a lover no matter how pretty she is. Yi women like to wear colorful clothes. Their clothes are full of embroidered patterns from head to toe. Every pattern is a fine artwork. The Hani people live in the west part of Yunnan province. They live in the mountainous region on farming and cultivating terraces. The clothes of Hani people vary according to age. There's an old saying among people, three changes in dressing style. Kids, male or female, all wear round hat and black clothes. There's no ornament in the clothes. The number of ornaments will increase with age. At 15, both male and female will have to change dressing styles. They also need to wear silver bubbles, silver pieces, glass beads and colourful feathers. Men wear a jacket buttoned down the front with pants and a green or white kerchief on the head. This kind of clothing full of ornaments will be worn till they get married. When they become father and mother they reduce the amount of ornaments. After 45 men will take off all the silver chains and beads from the clothes. These will be passed down to the younger generation. Women will take off the round canister and ornaments behind the hat, also the ornament at the chest. They'll wear a simple black jacket and a blue skirt. Among all the ethnic minority groups in the South, Dai women have the most beautiful dressing. Generally speaking, Dai women are slim and have good looks. They love to wear a short jacket with narrow sleeves and a tube skirt. It shows their fine figure perfectly. On top, they wear a white or red top. Outside is a tight short jacket. The short jacket with narrow sleeves covers the arms tightly. The jacket only reaches the waist. The lower part of the body is wrapped in a long cube skirt reaching the ankles. This style of dressing shows the beauty of their breast, waist and hips.
clothes of Dai men are simple and elegant. On top, they wear collarless short jackets buttoned down the front, or wide collared jackets with narrow sleeves. The lower part is long in the pants. Their headgear is a white, red, or blue cloth. This style makes it easy when working in the crop field and makes the men look handsome when dancing. Dai people all like to wear on their shoulders a bag made of cotton cloth. It's called Tong Pa. The bag is bright and colorful with various patterns of animals, trees, and flowers, or sometimes geometric patterns. Miao people living in the Miaoling Mountain and Wulin Mountain range are one of the ethnic minority groups with the longest history. When fully dressed, Miao girls are gathered together. It will create a fabulous world of silver. They coil their hair up with a fine silver flowery crown on top. Hanging beneath the silver crown is a line of tiny silver flowers. Around the neck is many layers of silver chaplets. The front chest is decorated with a silver lock. On the back is a silver mantle. All the earrings and bracelets are made of silver. Only in the two sleeves there is embroidery, mainly in firing red. But around the cuffs there is a wide circle of silver decoration. The clothes and silver ornaments of Miao girls are usually over kilograms. Some are inherited from the older generations. The skirts of Miao girls are pleated skirts. Beitze Chun, skirts that have a hundred pleats. There are over 500 pleats in one single skirt, and there are many layers, some even 30 or 40 layers. These skirts must be woven, dyed, sewed, and patterned, and embroidered by the girls themselves. With the colorful girdle, belly band, it's such a bright and amazing world of colors. Another ethnic minority group that loves to wear pleated skirts is Zhuang. Zhuang people are mostly inhabited in the Guanxi Zhuang Autonomous Region. Both men and women of Zhuang wear the Li Tong, a short jacket. Their dressing style is mainly a blue or black top with a skirt or a top with trousers. Zhuang people in Yunnan have been mingling for a long time with the Han people and other ethnic minority groups. The clothes of Zhuang women are of great diversity. They are all experts in weaving and embroidery. The Zhuang cloth and Zhuang brocade is famous for the elaborate patterns and beautiful colors. The wax printing is also popular with people for its unique feature. Zhuang women like to do their hair up and wrap the hair with a square cloth. The cube skirt wax printed with cyan cloth, a pleated skirt or baggy trousers, plus the white cloth decorations up the cuffs and skirt edges. Bai people are mostly inhabited in the Dali Bai Autonomous Prefecture, centered with the Air Sea in the southern part of Yunnan province. A few are scattered in Sichuan, Guizhou, and Hunan. Both Bai women and men worship white. They consider white the noblest color among all. Men in Dali area 
like to wear white jackets buttoned down the front with a black velvet waistcoat. Single girls wear a plait and tie a red hairband at the end. Then they'll wrap the plait around the white turban and wear a short embroidered apron. Opposite to the Bai people, Dong women like to wear black clothes. Black is used in spring, autumn and winter, while white is only used in summer and only for the upper part. Purple is usually used for festivities. Women wear colourless and broad sleeve jackets. <laughs> They wear a waistband, a turban for the upper part, and a skirt or trousers for the lower part. The skirt is always in black, regardless of seasons. In the clothes of some Dong women, there are flower patterns in their chest band. The patterns are usually pied magpie, crop tassels, waxberry, lychee, etc. It symbolizes good fortune and happiness. Different dressing styles developed in different living environments are a very unique characteristic of the ethnic minority groups in China. People always say that time and tide will wash out the glory. But the costumes of the ethnic minority groups are not buried in or fade away with time or the time. Instead, they are blossoming with flourishing beauty into the new millennium like the free and unconstrained flowers in the mountains.